Funeral directors, if you could come at this time. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let us pray. God, we don't always understand why it is that you allow the things that you allow. And God, we come in this moment with questions. We come in this moment confused. We come in this moment with a range of emotions. But God, even in moments like this, you said to trust in you with all of our heart and lean not into our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge you. For even in difficult moments like these, you're able to guide our each and every path. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come right now asking that your presence and your peace and your power and your comfort be with this family as only you can provide. But God, we have some questions. But God, even though we have questions, we can take comfort in knowing that to be absent from the body is to be present with you. And so, God, while we may be grieving on this side, we can take comfort in knowing that we'll see Sister Quran one more time. And so, God, we come saying, have your way in this service as only you can. Do it like only you can do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and put those hands together and give God some praise in this place on today. If you know that Sister Quran, even though she had a short life, she had a full life, won't you put those hands together and give God some praise? If Sister Quran ever touched your life, won't you put those hands together and give God some praise? If you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're going to see Sister Quran again on the other side, won't you put those hands together and give God some praise? But the Bible says that Jesus went to Calvary so that in moments like these, we can be comforted in knowing that we're going to see our dearly beloved sister again. So, oh, beloved, beloved, I know we got some questions. I know our hearts are heavy. I know we don't always understand the things that God allows. But we can take comfort in knowing that God still is in control and God still does all things well. Amen. At this particular time, we're going to have a, a, a musical selection by Akia White.
should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? And why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus Portion a constant friend is he. His eye is on. And I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing. And I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. And I sing. Because she is free, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches. Amen. God bless you, Sister White. God bless you, Sister White. God bless you, Sister White. At this time, we're going to have resolutions. At this time, uh, Sister Virginia Julian is going to come with two resolutions at this time. Are there any other resolutions that need to be read? Okay, from housing choice, gotcha. Good morning, family and friends. The resolution for housing choice partners, will you please stand? <clears throat> resolution for Sister Karan Leggett, gone too soon. Whereas Karen Leggett started at Housing Choice Partners November 1st, Liggett, Liggett, okay, Liggett, pardon me. Karen Liggett started, Car all right, my apologies. 
Thank you for letting me know. I appreciate that. Karan, let's start all over. Ligon? Yay! Karan Ligon started at Housing Choice Partners November 1st, 2019. She was the baby of their HCP family, and she wore that title with honor. Within a very short period of time, Karan received a promotion because she was so eager to learn past her duties and had a passion for helping not only her clients, but all her colleagues in the office. She was our go-to person. Another title that she wore with pride in our office was IT being her specialty. She took pride in being the mom of four wonderfully amazing children whom she also assimilated into the HCP family. Her favorite phrase was, y'all love these kids so much, when y'all coming to get them to babysit? Facts, I used to say that too. Karan truly had a passion for people and she had a real connection with her clients because she always provided a safe place for them to feel free and comfortable no matter the situation. Karan went above and beyond. She truly made a, high, a huge impact with a, in our entire HCP family and she will be forever missed. Therefore, be it resolved, our office will never, never be the same. Rest in peace, our dear sister. Housing Choice Partner Staff, the 13th day of April, 2024. Thank you. With the Dames Extraordinaire of the Red Hat Society, Chapter 67830, stand please. Right? Amen. That's right. Resolution for the late Quran Leggett? Yay! <laughs> Where, whereas Shirley Shelton, the beloved aunt of the deceased, is a member in good standing of Dames Extraordinaire. The Queen and the Chapter sisters felt it proper to send these expressions of sympathy to the family, hoping that it will be in some degree give comfort. Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to God's will as we extend our condolences to Shirley and her family in their hour of bereavement. We will have you know that we share your pain as you travel through this sorrowful period. We recommend that you put all your cares in God's hands, for he is able. Prayer will change things, whereas Shirley, your loved ones will no longer be on, your loved one will no longer be on this earth her memories will always be dear in your heart. You should not mourn Karan's passing, but should rejoice as she has gone to a home more beautiful than we have ever known. Surely, your red hat sisters are praying for you, but you must also pray, for time and prayer will bring you relief. Humbly submitted the 13th day of April, 2024. Renee Williams, or Renna, okay. Queen, Jeanette Weber, Vice Queen, and Karen Askew, Secretary. Thank you so much. Will the Oakdale family please stand? God has not promised skies always blue, flowers strewn pathway all of our lives through. God has not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, peace without pain, but God has promised strength for the day, rest for the labor and light for the way, grace for the trials, help from above, unfailing sympathy, undying love. Whereas God knew it was time to take our sister in Christ, Quran, we the members of the Oakdale Covenant Church take heed in the reverence and humbly submit to the will of God. Be it resolved that our sister Karan joined our Oakdale family as a child in December 1997, and it was Myrtle Coleman who was the one who counseled her. She participated in church, Children's Church as a child and attended Oakdale Christian Academy. We know that your sorrow is, sorrow is great, but it's good to know that this earthly loss is heaven's gain. 
We extend to Mother Freddie Towns and her entire family, her husband, her children, our deepest sympathy and prayers during your bereavement over the loss of your loved one. Please adhere to God and lean on him for earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Therefore, cast your burdens upon the Lord, and he will sustain thee. Psalms 55, 22. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family, and a copy will be filed in the church office on this, the 13th day of April 2024. Prayerfully submitted, Oakdale Covenant Church, Reverend Dr. D. Darrell Griffin, Senior Pastor, and Sister Diane Smith, Church Board Chairperson. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Sister Virginia. At this time, we will have remarks. Uh, we have time for about three to four remarks. So for those individuals who are desiring to do remarks at this time, if you could come to my left, your right. Uh, Deacon Bess, if you could just wave your hand and let them know. If you could sit, line up right here uh, on this first row to my left, your right. Those individuals desiring to do remarks at this time. Are there any other individuals desiring to do remarks at this time? We're going to ask that you all line up at this time. to let you know that I will forever love you deeply. I love the joy you brought around. I love your smile as well. I will miss it. I cherish and appreciate the life we had together. I wish we had more time together, but God had other plans. I love you, Mama. You're my man. Good morning. Um, my name is Tiffany Mims, and I'm the best friend of Latrice Towns. Um, who is Cousin Tracy for Quran. Um, I met Quran in 2013. Um, Latrice told me I needed to go and meet her grandmother, and her grandmother's from the South, and I'm from the South. So in a Southern way, when someone invites you to meet a story member of their family, you pay homage by baking a cake. So when I came in, Granny just nodded and said, that's what you're supposed to do. And Aunt Sally and Aunt Cookie tasted the cake and was like, you got some sense. But if you walk in Miss Town's home, there is a wall with a mirror. And I saw these eyes. And it was a short person, but he was a giant. And that's the first time I met Karan. And we had our own shared relationship and shared experiences. She was more than a little sister and more than a cousin, but I'm 15 years older than Karan. And I saw her time. So 11 years later, um, Latrice is going through bar study. And Karan is like, I got time for my cousin. So when Latrice and Karan talk, that's several hours. <laughs> so I finished dinner and came back, and she ended the conversation with, tell my friend Tiffany I said hello. And because of the choices I made, Dallas can no longer be home. And out of all of the things that I've done here in Chicago, having the right to be Karan's friend is one of the most important things It's one of the most important things that will always matter to me for three reasons. Quran was pure. However she felt about you, she felt about you. Quran hadn't said two words to me sometime, especially when Kennedy was little. She'd be like, get up. Go ahead and chase these kids, because if she didn't love you and she didn't trust you, you weren't going to be around the kids. Um, Quran gave me the courage to be unapologetically myself. And I took time, and the friend thing mattered because friend means equality. She wasn't my little sister because I learned so much from her on how to go ahead and own myself. And lastly, Karan 
outside of A. Shirley and Granny and Reed are the linchpins of this family. And you don't get in the town's family without Quran's blessing. And the thing that I didn't get to tell my friend as we had planned, um, both of us to meet this summer, is that her story wasn't over. Because when I fell down, Quran gave me courage. And I just want the kids to know here, there are four chapters that ain't even got started yet. And as long as those chapters remain open in our hearts, Quran's story will never be over. Good morning, everyone. My name is Pevi, and I met Quran through my best friend, Cheryl, and uh, her uncle dog on 119, because he fixed everybody car. That was, that was the meeting place. But I'm going to make my real short and sweet. On um, the 26th of March, I had a doctor's appointment at 6.32 in the morning. I get a text from Quran, and it says, good morning. Praying for you, God. Praying for you, God, to be to, wait, God to be with you today doing your doctor visit, doctor's appointment. God is able, no matter what we come against, have an amazing day. This was at 6.32. At 7 o'clock, I get another call from Donna telling me about the incident that occurred. But what my point is, I'm saying, we never know when our time is coming. But Quran is the type of person that prays for everybody. And I feel so blessed to get this text. And 40 minutes later, I get a call. And not only that, when she told me she was going to be my neighbor, that really just put it all together. I go to work at 4 o'clock in the morning. I leave out at 3.40 when it's snowing outside. I go wash, dust the snow off our car. At 3.40 in the morning, I go past our house. She left the light on in her little bitty car. I call her, your lights is on in your car. <laughs> because she became more than just dog niece. She became my niece as well. And like I tell the kids, I'm on the next block. Y'all ever need me. Just come and ring the doorbell, or you'll see my car. You'll see my car. Y'all more than welcome. And by me saying that, I love you guys, but I definitely love Quran. She, she was just so amazing. She was so amazing. And on that note, y'all stay blessed and stay prayed up. Giving honor to God. I just want to say that Quran. <laughs> Quran is my baby, you hear me? My makeup artist, my secretary, everything. She gonna make it happen for me, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't even put on one of my eyelashes this morning. <laughs> I'm like, Quran, what you at now? God, I had a fit put that eyelash on. Baby pie. Sally, I wanna say to you, Thank you for sharing her with me. You know, thank you. Kenya, Kitty, Kenya, I love you. Okay. Amen. Quran was my favorite cousin. <laughs> that was my favorite cousin. I used to tell her like everything. So like she all gone and embraced me for real, cause what I mean? <laughs> it break me cause like I used she used to always call me for no reason. Like, 
no reason. <laughs> Just to like, you know, to make me feel better, but <laughs> this was y'all last time together. <laughs> so I love you. I really do. <laughs> This is tough. Um, my name is Deshanti, and uh, if anybody know who I am, then it was necessary for you to know who I am. If you don't, then obviously it wasn't. Uh, I've been knowing Quran since the age of 15, and uh, so that's <clears throat> 18 years of friendship that we've had, even with the gaps in between. I'm not gonna get too deep, I don't have a lot of time. Um, but I received a message this morning um, because I've been tripping ever since this happened. Um, not sure where the other guy went, but I received a message from Quran before at 6.37 that morning as well. And I obviously wasn't the last person, but I was one of the few people that she spoke to last. And I thank God for that. Um, I talked to her the night before. Didn't get a chance to call her back. I had my time with, with that guilt, but I let that go. Um, I was here a couple weeks ago for something totally different. And uh, I got a chance to spend some time with her and the kids. And at the time, I didn't have the money to do it, but I had to do what I had to do at the time to do what I had to do. But in that mix, she was able to make time to come and see me and meet me. Wilma's, the barbecue spot. Then you know what's going on. Um, so, um, long story short, the situation happens, and I didn't have the money to come, right? And uh, I start tripping. I start tripping out. And I'm going to tell y'all, my whole point of saying this is really quick um, in a minute. But I started tripping out, and I was telling my, telling my moms, because I found out I was in shock. I couldn't cry. But once I got on my phone with my mother, I just... I lost it all. And then we started talking as time went on. And then I told her, I was like, I was like dang, mom, like, I really wish I didn't go for that situation because I would have had the money to go for the. And she was like, what? What are you talking about? And I'm like, I, I ain't got the money. I'm, I want to go. I want to be supportive. I want to be there. She like, son, the life is more important than the death. What are you talking about? And I was like, I'm tripping. Well, yeah, you, you right. Like. She like, you got a chance to see her, you got a chance to hug her, you got a chance to talk to the kids, you got a chance to do this. And Karan sent me a message as I got back home and said, I appreciate you for making that time to spend with me and the kids. So the devil had me tripping out. And my point of saying it is, is I feel like, this is me, I feel like the devil has declared war on us. And I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that. Before a war starts, it's a battle first. It's a disagreement. It's some animosity, it's some friction between two parties, right? And somebody's not agreeing about something. So somebody's going to take the first punch. I feel like the devil took the first punch on us. This is the battle. But what he's not going to do is win the war. And that's the message that I received this morning. That this is a war, right? But in order for him to not win this war, we got to stand up still. And we got to push on still. I'm not telling nobody not to grieve. I'm not telling you pain is not real and it's all in your head. And we were made this way. But the war is to keep going, keep pushing. For my God kids, I want y'all to keep pushing, keep going. Kenneth Kennedy, Kenya, keep pushing. You too, you keep pushing. Y'all got a good support, good guy right here. Y'all got me too, all right? I ain't never been that close before because, you know, I always talk to your mom and I speak to y'all through her, but we know where she's where she, she passed on, now it's us. And I feel like the devil could have did something different. He could have took an older generation out, someone older and beautiful, but he decided to take someone young and beautiful because he knew where to punch us. But we had to stand firm, y'all. This is war. So when that war, you graduate, you graduate, you graduate, you guys become great citizens, great people, and do work that she embedded into you. 
all that hollering and stuff and all that fussing she was doing, she ain't doing for nothing, okay? Y'all know what's going on. I love y'all so much. Um, but stand strong, stand firm. Quran is all in here. Quran not there no more. She's here. She's right here. She's up there. She's on the upper decks. I see Quran all over this place. That was just a shell. Don't let that shell go, but she's all in here. Okay? All right? Nobody came in for an invite. Nobody came in by accident, right? Okay. All right. Well, love y'all. See y'all. Peace. These two individuals here will be the last two individuals. Look, how do I follow that? But just to piggyback off what he was saying, everybody who knows Karan knows that she was great into IT, so heaven must be doing something, getting digitally inclusive or something like that, because they needed, they needed specifically her to do that job. No one else on this planet, heaven or earth, could do that job in heaven that God needed to be done, other than my sister. Um, my name is Samantha. We started off as co-workers. They used to make a joke at our office that, you know, Dewberry don't, everybody called me Dewberry. Dewberry don't like nobody. Dewberry don't like nobody. But it, it, I hold my friends dear. I don't just call anybody a friend. And it took some time for, because we both, anybody knows Quran, she's a strong woman. She's an alpha woman, type A. So we are just alike. So it took time, maybe over a month, we grew. I saw the love that she had for her children. I saw the relationship she had with her mom. And I'm the same way. My family is my life. Her family was her life. And we bonded over that. She was a very spiritual person. Every morning, she would come. I would come in, she would be listening to her spiritual things. She would listen to videos, YouTubes. And I, she brought me closer to God. And she was young. That was my little sister. And she brought me closer. I have a relationship. I was raised in the church. However, seeing her and the relationship she had, how I would come and talk to her about things, and she would always bring it back to a spiritual level at such a young age, such a young age, so connected with God. And that was one of the things that I loved about her. She was not judgmental. I could talk to her about anything. She would never judge me. She would give me, you know, advice. And we just bonded. We t it, it started as co-workers. It transitioned into friends. And now we're sisters. Our families are connected. Anybody that knows KK, I call her KK. She wanted all her friends to be friends. Her family welcomed me. I love her children. You are like my children. I will all Y'all going to see me now more than you have ever seen me before. Because I, all of us, everybody that loves Quran, we are going to rally around y'all. Every milestone that you make, we will be right there cheering. You had a mom that didn't just cheer from the sidelines. She ran on the court. So the same cheers and all that that she would give y'all, we are going to be right there. I promise you that. We gonna be right there. You are amazing children. It's almost like we don't know why God prepares us for certain things, but I wanna let you know I am so proud of you guys and how resilient that you are. I am so proud, everybody is proud of you. I love you and I, uh, HCP, the Dewberry family, all of us will always be here for you guys no matter what, okay? I love y'all. At this time, I'm gonna ask that Sister Latoya Towns comes with an acknowledgement of cards, telegrams, and condolences. family and friends, thank you all so much for your presence today. We the family of Karan T. Liggett. We appreciate your support, your prayers, expressions of love, calls of strength and support, your visits, dropping by food, um, checking on the children and my aunt and uncle. We also hold dear to our hearts your words of encouragement, your deeds of endearment, flowers of fragrance and beauty through words and action and even flowers and plants tributes, tokens, cards, and visits. We thank you too for your presence and your thoughtfulness in this time of sorrow and grief. Our burden has been lightened just a little bit by your compassion and your heartfelt kindness. With deepest sympathy, excuse me, with deepest sympathy, the family of Quran T. Liggett. Thank you, Sister Latoya. Sister Latrice is going to come at this time with a reading of the obituary. Yes, 
something to Quran. <laughs> Quran, Tanisha Liggett, a beloved and angelic soul who graced this world with her presence has departed our midst. If that ain't the most Quran statement in the world, our baby. Born August 8th, 1990, Quran touched the lives of many during her remarkable journey. She was preceded in death by her father, Daryl Liggett, and brother Reed Towns. Quran was an alumna of Chicago International Charter School, Longwood Academy, where she left an indelible mark. Her dedication, and passion for education were truly evident to all who knew her. Professionally, Quran contributed her talents to Housing Choice Partners, where her commitment to serve is shown brightly. Her tenacious work ethic and enthusiasm impacted countless lives. And her legacy will certainly continue to inspire. Quran leaves to cherish her memory, her husband Deshaun, parents Verlene, Sally, and Tony, her beautiful children, Kenya, Kenneth, Kennedy, and Samaje, all of whom carry her spirit and brilliant light forward, guided by the love she bestowed upon them. Her grandmother, Freddie, her uncles, Rodney, Tanya, Uncle Walter, Dwayne, her aunts, Patricia, Ray, King, Patricia, Ray, Shirley, James, and Valerie, Robert, who will forever hold her dear in their hearts. She is also survived by a host of extended family members, including William Sr., William Jr., Quentin, Diamond, and Dejeuner. Quran's circle of love also encompassed a litany of special cousins, countless friends, and colleagues. Quran was literally always the life of the party. Her laughter was absolutely contagious, as was her effervescent spirit. Quran's passion and innovative skills for makeup artistry transformed transform faces, hearts, and dreams alike. She reveled in creating beauty, leaving her mark and her creativity on the rich canvas of life. As we bid farewell to Quran, let us celebrate her vibrant spirit, her unbridled passion for life, and the gift of herself she so, she so generously, she gave so generously, so generously. May her memory be a beacon of love light and resilience and joy, a testament to a life well lived. I just want to say about my baby, that girl never met a stranger. She never met a stranger. And if you were able to be touched by our baby, know that your life is forever better. I don't know why God did this. I have questions, but I'm gonna lean on the fact that there must be something. There must be something. I don't know what it is, and, and I'm just so thankful for Quran. She was, she was a light. Thank y'all. Sister Towns, I must say, you 
you know how incredibly difficult this is for your entire Oakdale family. We can't imagine what this family is going through right now. This has caught all of us by surprise. So on behalf of Dr. D. Dale Griffin, our senior pastor, he wanted to be here today. Circumstances prohibited him from being here today. But I want you to know, Sister Towns, we love you. To Deshaun, her beloved husband, God bless you, sir. To all of these children and this entire family, you know, they got a cliche in the church that they say, in times like these, that earth has no sorrow, that heaven can't heal. But in moments like this, cliches don't work because the hole is deep, the void is real, the pain is indescribable. So that I would encourage you, feel the pain because it's very much so real. But the God of comfort is there to walk with you in the pain. And you don't have to go through this pain by yourself. So at this particular time, we're going to have a final selection from Phineas Ale Finus Alexander, and he will be immediately followed by the senior pastor of the Brotherly Love Church, Pastor Lance Ellis, who will give words of comfort. Praise the Lord. How, how can I say thanks, oh Lord, for the many things that you've done for us? Things are so undeserved. But Lord, you gave just to prove your love for us. And the voices of, of a million angels could not express our gratitude. All that we are or ever hope to be we owe it all to you and to God be the glory to God be the glory to God be the glory for the things that he has done with his blood he has saved us and with his power his amazing power the Lord has raised us to God be the glory for the things that he has done and oh just let me live I want to live my life 
and just let it be pleasing, Lord, to you. And should I gain any praise, just let it go to Cal for and oh, with his blood, he has saved us. And with his power, his amazing power, the Lord has raised us to God. Be ye the glory for the things, for the things, for the things that he has done, has done, has done. Somebody give God a clap of praise. Somebody give him a clap of praise. Somebody all over this house, give God a standing ovation. Come on, all over the house. If you have legs, give God a standing ovation. Oh, come on, you can clap those hands better than you're doing. If you love the Lord, clap those hands till they turn red on the inside. Oh, come on, come on. I see more hands than I hear. Come on, come on. Now, if you love Quran, why don't we salute her right now? Clap those hands for her. Let's thank God for her legacy. Let's thank God for her life. Hallelujah. God is a good God. C sharp. God is a good God. And we honor God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're looking good today. Come on, look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, say, you look good too, boo. Now come on and give God a praise in here. God is good. He's worthy of all the praise. Real quick, real quick, real quick. I got a text message from Quran. Huh? Y'all didn't know Quran was a, a texter. And she'll text you in a minute, Jack. L listen to this text. Good morning, Pastor Ellis. You know, that's that. I woke up this morning and did my devotion and prayer and went into praise and worship, and I've been crying ever since. Because I've been crying ever since because with everything I've been through, God has truly been a keeper. I've lost my brother. I lost my cousin. I've been a single mother. I came from the projects. Lost jobs. Struggled with my babies and so much more. Here's your shouter. You ready? But he's never let me. And he never forsake me. He's kept every single promise and never let me down. He stayed with me, protected me, provided for me. Y'all, y'all ain't said nothing. Watched over me, heard me, fed me, loved me, sustained me, carried me. Here's my part. Transformed me. Showed me, spoke to me. Been there when I thought I was alone. Watched over my kids. Been the father they didn't have. Strengthened me, guided me. Been the joy in heartache. Been 
my rock in a hard place and my happiness in a sad place. It ain't enough time or tongues to thank him enough. I'm just at all of him. Giving me the gift of God was the greatest thing my granny could have ever done for me. Oh, you can do better than that. She loved you so much. And for this we say, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, clap your hands with me. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, clap it with me. Come on, say, what a mighty God we serve. Come on, open your mouth. We serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve. Come on, one more round, say it again. What a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve listen one verse stand with me real quick second corinthians chapter five and i'm going to get out of your way second corinthians chapter five i believe quran is all through this text second corinthians chapter five verse 17 therefore if any man be in Christ, <laughs> he is a new creature. Old things <laughs> are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, but on your way down, look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I'm not perfect but I'm new. Clap those hands and give God praise right there. Come on, say that again. Say, I'm not perfect, but I'm new. Listen, I heard all of the wonderful accolades and the words that you guys gave and talked about concerning Quran, how amazing she was. She was a techie. She did all of these things for the office. And all of that is great, but the Quran I knew was a boss chick. Huh. The Quran I knew was a, <laughs> a boss chick. Are y'all hearing me this morning? This word perfect in the text it means to be made completely free from faults. Completely free from faults. Completely free from inadequacies, failures, mistakes, problems, difficulties, issues, troubles, setbacks, adversities, mishaps, accidents, disasters, tragedies, afflictions, sorrow, misery, trials, tribulations, catastrophes, and calamities. That's what perfect means to be free from, which means none of us in here under the sound of my voice, we're not perfect. And Quran wasn't a perfect woman, but I tell you this, she wasn't perfect, but she was new. Are you hearing me this morning? She was without faults. She didn't have, uh, 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 she wasn't perfect, but she loved the Lord. This word knew something or someone that's displaying behavior patterns that never existed before. 
We call this, watch this, acting brand new. And every time I encountered Quran, she was acting <laughs> brand new. And she never had a problem jokingly telling you, yeah, I'm acting brand new. Beloved, the author of this particular text thought or deemed it being necessary for us to understand the importance of being in Christ. The text says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, let me help you this morning. This word, if, it is conditional. And whenever you see the word if in the Bible, someone or somebody has a decision to make. Watch this. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. If, somebody shout if. Uh, if thou would confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be what? Save. The word if, whenever you see the word if in the scriptures, someone has a decision to make. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. The scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. This word man is not gender biased, ladies. Because when you see the word man, it means mankind. So if any one of us are in Christ, we become new creatures. All things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. I am so glad that my friend Quran was wrapped in Christ. Which means she wasn't perfect, but it means that she was new. She was in Christ. Not only was Quran in Christ, uh, 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 she became a new creature the moment she told the Lord, yes, Granny. She became a new creature. All things were passed away and behold, everything else around her became new. Somebody shout, look at me now. I am a new creature. I am a new creation of being. I'm not perfect. <laughs> but I'm new. Quran wasn't perfect, but she was new. Why was she new? Because she gave the Lord a yes. Why does God see us new? I'm glad you brought that up because he sees us new, not because of anything that we have done. Don't get it twisted today. Because the Bible says that, 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 that our behaviors are like I, we're like filthy rags stink to his nostrils. So when God looks at us, he doesn't see us, but he sees Jesus who we're wrapped in. That's why we are made brand new. Because when heaven looks at us, heaven sees us through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. This word creature, it, it, it means that, 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 that it translates to mean a new creation of being. In other words, when you're in Christ, there are some benefits that comes along with being in him. One of the many benefits is that we are made over. We are made over and over and over again. I'm reminded of the text in Jeremiah when Jeremiah received the word from the Lord. And the Lord told Jeremiah to get up and go down to the potter's house. And when Jeremiah got down to the potter's house, he saw the potter there working a work on a wheel with some clay. 
And every time the clay would look disappointing to the potter, the potter had an opportunity to shape and make it all over again. Somebody say, I'm not perfect, but I'm new. This reminds me of Quran because Quran made it a point to make sure that she was in the hands of God at all times. She would text and she would call, Pastor, you preached about this. I pulled up the, the, the scripture and it's blessing me all over again. She wasn't perfect, but she was new. The Bible says that he went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessels that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord. Behold, as this clay is in the potter's hands, so are ye in mine, O house of Israel. Beloved, it is a beautiful thing to know, and it is a safe place to be in knowing that Quran was in the potter's hand. She testified on many times over and over again how her grandmother uh, introduced her to the love of Jesus Christ. You just heard the text message. She said that was one of the best gifts that her granny could have given her. And that was the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. Quran would press her way all the way from the south side. Sunday morning and press her way to the house of prayer at Brotherly Love Church on the west side of Chicago, west side, uh, 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 Central and Chicago Avenue. She made it a point to make sure that her family, that her children was in church. She gave her babies the same gift that her grandmother gave to her. And so, beloved, if we're ever going to uh, 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 see Quran again, we're going to have to make sure that we are connected to the same potter. We're going to have to make sure that we give the Lord a yes if you want to see her again. Quran was a beautiful soul. And when I tell you she was a boss chick, she was a boss chick. She took care of her family. She took care of her children. Quran took care of business. Are y'all hearing me? She took care of business. And contrary to popular belief, she loved her husband. Y'all can do better than that. She loved her husband. How do I know? Because I was there in the trenches. She would text or call me, Pastor Ellis, he the only one, he getting on my nerve. He, 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 you the only one that can get to him. Yeah, she would call me on you, Jack. And I'd call him and be like, hey man, what's going on? No much, Pastor Ellis, man, we just. But she loved her family. She loved her children. Everything Quran touched, she loved. Everything. If you were privileged to be in her presence, hear me now. Y'all better hear me. If you were present, if you were privileged to be in her presence, that meant she loved you. 
Quran didn't fool around with a lot of people, man. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. If you were in her presence, that meant something. As a matter of fact, if you were privileged to be around her, she loved you. Quran would dearly be missed. When I got the call that she had made her transition to go and be with the Lord, I must admit it shook me to the core. That was one call that I wasn't prepared for. This beautiful young lady has left a mark in every last one of our lives. Her smile, her wit, her personality, the life of the party. I'm talking about loud, you hear me? You knew Quran was in the building, Jack. And she will forever be missed. Deshaun, stand where you are. Every married man come to this altar with me now. Even if you don't wanna be married, you're married now, come to the altar. you that Quran was a boss chick and she took care of business Deshaun look around you there are so, so many men here in this building there are a lot of men here at this altar we're rooting for you Let me remind you, Deshaun, that the Lord loves you and he cares for you. Last night, before I went to bed, the Lord gave me this word for you, Deshaun. It comes from the book of Luke. Verse chapter 22, it says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee. That thy faith will not fail. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. Deshaun, I don't have the answer. No one here understands. The mysteries of God. But what I will say to you on today. Glory be to God. Satan desires to sift you as wheat. I need every man at this altar praying now. But 
we're praying for you that your faith will not fail that you draw closer to God even in this moment I don't know what it's like to be a widower but I do serve of God that said he'll never leave us nor forsake us and that he'll be with us until the end of the age your faith will not fail because we're praying for you God is going to see you through and right now I speak new strength in your life. New strength comes to you. God's going to do it. And he's going to get the glory out of your life. So my brother, don't fear. Stay focused. You have a job to do. God is counting on you. Samaj is counting on you. Kenneth is counting on you. Kennedy is counting on you. Kenya is counting on you. You're going to make it. And Quran is cheering you on. You're going to get through this, brother. You're going to get through this. With the help of God. Look at this village that's out here today. We love you, man. And don't let the enemy tell you otherwise. Because he used moments like this to play tricks on us. But your faith will not fail you. New strength comes now. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive it all. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Oh, come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this building. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Come on, come on. He's worthy of praise. Come on, brothers, before you go back to your seat, embrace him and let him know that you're here for him. Come on, ladies, don't leave us out here by ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, heaven doesn't miss a thing. Heaven doesn't miss a thing. God sees all and he knows all. We may not understand it, but God does. Beloved, we have a responsibility here to look after these babies. 
Are you hearing me? And I just feel led of the Lord. I'm going to sow today. I'm going to feed this family tonight. Y'all say amen. So, Deshaun, Mama Sally, somebody get me a cash app, a Zelle number, but I'm feeding these kids tonight. Or tomorrow, or Tuesday, whichever one you choose. But we're going to make sure. We're going to make sure that these babies are taken care of. Because this boss chick would have made sure of that. Are y'all hearing me? Everyone standing where you are. Okay, what we? Okay. Grab that neighbor by the hand. We thank God for the memories that we have of our dear sister Quran. Hold dear to them. She made us laugh. She made us cry. Even there were times she even maybe probably wanted to make us fight. But she was a beautiful soul. And I enjoyed every moment that I had with her and her family. I believe it was the young man that said, this is just a shell. She's not here. But she's here. And every last one of us. So don't lose your joy. Don't lose your smile. Because Quran is counting on every last one of us. Beloved, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Drop that hand and give God praise now in Jesus' name. Come on and put those hands together and give God some praise as you take your seats. And I need you all to do me a favor. I need you all to do me a favor. We have gone 20 minutes longer than we normally do. And so I appreciate you, Oakdale. I appreciate you for cooperating with us. So I need to do a couple of things so we can get everything ready for us to be in worship on tomorrow. I know I let the moment go a little bit longer than we normally do, but... Uh, Pastor Ellis just married Deshaun and Quran two years ago. And so I wanted to make sure that he had adequate time to minister to Deshaun uh, as only he could being the marrying pastor of them two years ago. So I know that is a little bit different for us. I know that is not what we used to do. Uh, but that is the reason why I went on ahead and allowed that to happen because I thought, thought it important. So this is what I need you to do. If you're sitting in the sanctuary and you're in a metal seat, if you could stand so that our ushers can come and collect those chairs up from you. If you're sitting in the sanctuary and you're in a metal seat, uh, if you could stand so our ushers can collect those from you. If you're in the foyer, I also need you to stand so that our ushers can collect those uh, ch uh, seats from you uh, at this particular time. Uh, our ushers are collecting those chairs from you at this particular time. Also, if you are a pallbearer, if you are a pallbearer, I'm going to ask that you immediately go to the foyer at this time. If you are a pallbearer, if you could immediately go to the foyer at this time, my left, your right, in the back. If you are a pallbearer, if you could go to the foyer, 
the funeral director will be meeting you in the back, uh, but we're asking all pallbearers if you could go back to the back at this time. Also, deacons, I need a couple of deacons if you could help us with these flowers. If you could help us with these flowers, we're going to need uh, a couple of hands with the flowers. Uh, if there are some ushers, once you collect those chairs, we're going to need a couple of hands to assist us with the flowers uh, at this time. And then I'm going to give our, our funeral director the opportunity uh, to make his final remarks, and then I'll come back and close us out after the funeral director would have given his final remarks. Funeral director. God bless you, Reverend Davenport. We want to say on behalf of the Leak and Sons Funeral Home, our entire staff, thank you to this great family for allowing us to serve you. Thank the Oakdale family and all those who participated in this homegoing celebration of our dear sister. God bless you all. Thank you, funeral director. At this particular time, we're going to process out. The family will have me to let you know that there is a repass at Zion Lutheran Church uh, at 9901 South Winston Avenue. That is Zion Lutheran Church, 9901 South Winston Avenue, immediately following uh, this particular service. Let us stand. If everyone uh, can remain seated with the exception of the family, and we'll process out at this particular time. <laughs> 